You're tuned in to Methodist Central Hall Westminster's live stream service, and our worship will begin shortly. Methodist Central Hall Westminster's live stream service will begin at 9.30 this morning. you're in the right place. This is Methodist Central Hall Westminster's live stream service and our worship will begin at 9.30. Thank you for tuning in to Methodist Central Hall Westminster's live stream service, which will begin at 9.30 this morning. MCHW.live, church online every Sunday. We're so glad that you've tuned in to Methodist Central Hall Westminster's online service. Our worship will begin after this countdown.
And a very good morning to you, and thank you for tuning in to this live-streamed Trinity Sunday service from our chapel here at the heart of London. We're delighted that you've joined us, and I'm Tony Miles, the Superintendent Minister, and I want to say on behalf of the whole team here at MCHW that we're delighted that you've chosen to worship with us this morning. The Reverend Lansford Pentimity, uh, my trusty colleague, is here, and he's going to be leading this service with me. And uh, because the wonders of technology we're able to be with you here because we're actually away uh, with the church at our fun and fellowship weekend in Arlesford uh, so uh, Peter Edwards is going to be preaching isn't he yeah he's going to be preaching good morning church yes we're so thankful to God and for the wonders of technology that we're able to do this here with you this morning and we're really really grateful to the Reverend Peter Edwards one of our own honorary ministers here at Methodist Central Westminster for holding the fort for us. Peter will be bringing us God's word later on. We look forward to what he has got to say. Don't forget, as always, we always say it, if you wish to follow the service using this other order of service, you can find that on our website at mchw.live, but also you can get that from our YouTube comment section uh, uh, on YouTube. So please, please, if you wish to do that, you can get those from there. I do encourage you to please click that like button. We always <laughs> say that because once you click it, you're spreading the word of God because YouTube will take your, your, your likes and spread the word. So please, please do click that button, which is the thumbs up button on your browser there. If you haven't done so already, please do subscribe to our channel. We've been saying this is so important. Please do. And it helps us to keep in touch with you as well. Now, with us in the chapel this morning, uh, Charlie Bushell is here, our technician and also the producer of our Him and Her feature with his wife, Roz. And that will appear a little later. We've got a Trinity special for you. And we also have a global greeting from the Philippines because we're actually marking 124 years of independence for the Philippines. We have a Filipino community in our church and so we like to do that on their day of independence. And also later in our service, we do have William Cuffling, a member of our online congregation. He'll be reading for us, but also we do have a member of the congregation here, Mary Grace, who is also <laughs> part of the Filipino community, and she will be reading our lesson as well. We thank them both for reading for us today. But first, on this Trinity Sunday, we remember the greatness of our almighty God with a reflection that's taken from Psalm 8. Yes, O Lord, our Lord, your greatness is seen in all the world. And so we sing together the splendour of the King, how great thou art.
how great, how great indeed thou art. Let us now go to the Lord, our God, in prayer. Let us pray. Holy, holy Lord, God Almighty, one God in three persons, blessed Trinity, you are all loving, all gracious, all powerful. You deserve our praise. Mighty God, you are ever faithful, ever near, ever active. We deserve, you deserve our worship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, receive us and the prayers we offer in spirit and in truth. You are greater than what our limited human minds can comprehend. Yet, you have revealed your glory to us. You are before all things, above and beyond all things. Yet, you lived and died among us. You are at work in every situation and circumstances. Yet, so often we fail to recognize your presence. For our narrowness of vision, Lord, we ask for forgiveness. For our feeble faith, we say have mercy on us. For our spiritual blindness, we cry for pardon. For our unwillingness to follow your will and your ways, we pray that you forgive us. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, receive us and the prayers we offer in spirit and in truth. Heavenly Trinity, your word assures us that you are here watching over us day by day. You promised to be by our side until the end of the age. For the times when we have rejected your care package. For our forgetfulness of your presence. And our stifling of your movement. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, receive us and the prayers we offered in spirit and in truth. Lord, we pray that you accept our worship and all its weakness, our discipleship and all its frailty, and our service and all its flaws. Speak to us this day that we may experience more of your love and your goodness. May we live this worship with more of your power. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, three in one. To you be glory, praise, and honor. Today, tomorrow, and always. Amen. And now, in whatever language, or a version that is close to your heart. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus gave us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen indeed. It is now that time when we join him and her to see what they've been up to.
And thank you very much to Charlie and Roz for this week's Him and Her, or we should perhaps say Him, Her and Her. Uh -huh. <laughs> but they did very well capturing Trinity Sunday for us, and we'll have another episode of Him and Her or Alter Egos in future weeks. Let's look at uh, what's going on in the life of the church here at MCHW. Uh, today, some of the congregation will be away at our Fun and Fellowship weekend, but we still have an in-person service at 11 a.m. here, and that will be a Trinity service celebrating the 124th anniversary of the Philippines with the Reverend Peter Edwards and John Phillips. That will be in the Great Hall. And in the chapel this evening at 6 o'clock, there will be another in-person service with, again, the Reverend Peter Edwards, who we're very grateful, is covering for us this weekend. Looking ahead to next week, uh, on Sunday the 19th of June, we have an online love feast at 9.30. I shall be preaching. Lansford will be with me. That's mchw.live, this channel. And then 11 a.m., again, we have an in-person confirmation service with Holy Communion. And that will be in the Great Hall, and we're really looking forward to making six new members and welcoming in new members by transfer as well. So we're really looking forward to that next week. And then at six o'clock in the evening, a reflective service with the Reverend Gordon Newton, and that will be in the chapel. As always, after this service, immediately after this service at 10.30, we do have the breakout session, mm. and the link for that, you'll find that in our grapevine. So please... Do join us if you are able to in that conversation. Do not forget to spread the word. We've got a word for you to spread. That's your little <laughs> job to tell everyone that Methodist Central Hall Westminster, we do have our services date back to July 2020 via mchw.live for people to go back to and watch and then share with other people to also watch as well. What about local, local arrangement in That's churches? That's right. Where churches have a local arrangement, that means they haven't got a preacher. Why not suggest that they use one of our broadcasts? Because uh, people can worship along and discuss the service afterwards. And we'd like as many people as possible to know about the resources that we have available. And not just the whole service in video format, we also have sermons, don't we? Yeah, it's all in there. So it's all in there. There's been a lifeline for so many people who have not been able to join us at the 9.30 service, they can always go back to that and watch it. That's the testimonies we've been having from people around. We also do have nearly 500, yes, you do have me right, 500 of our sermons dating back to 2015, available on our website at mchw.live, but also you can watch them at our sermon podcast which you can find at mchw.live and also via your own private podcast provider. So plenty there to keep you going and also to support other churches that need that help. Um, we've got uh, a time now to rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep, and we continue to pray for those who are grieving. But also, it's time to say a happy birthday, and our hymn sheets have been given by Mr. Jacob Baden on behalf of his wife, Mrs. Hectoria Baden. And the message is to thank the Lord for the blessing of another birthday which occurred on the 8th of June, 2022. Pray for strength and fortitude to serve faithfully and praise all gracious God always. Amen. So very happy birthday to you, Hectoria. Congratulations and many happy returns. Look at those wonderful flowers. 
beautifully arranged for us by our flower team. They have been given by the Filipino Fellowship here at Methodist Central Hall, Westminster, uh, uh, to mark their independence. And they, they wrote these words, which I will now read. It says, Praise the Lord for 124 years in Philippines Independence Day. Mabuha, ex Filipinas. Long live Philippines. Congratulations to you all. Yes, we do. And today, of course, we have a global greeting and we must have one from the Philippines. So we've got Bishop M, uh, sorry, Bishop Pete M. Torrio Jr. who's bringing our global greeting. Greetings to the Methodist Church in Great Britain and Filipino United Methodists and other Filipino Christians who have now joined our faith community in Methodist Central Hall, Westminster, London, under the leadership of the Superintending Minister, Reverend Tony Miles. Greetings also to our dear Pastor Manuel Sen of the Filipino Fellowship. As we celebrate Philippine independence on June 12, 2022, the 124th anniversary of Philippine independence. Let us remember more than 300 years of struggle against imperialism and colonialism. We honor the heroic fathers and mothers of our beloved nation who offered their lives to secure the national freedom and independence from foreign powers that our generation now enjoys. We must not only cherish the significance of this red letter day, but we must commit to uphold and defend our independence at all times. This is important as our national sovereignty and integrity are not usually respected by others who want to take possession of our historic islands within the Philippine archipelago. To our brothers and sisters in Philippine Methodism, may I convey my heartfelt gratitude for your unfailing support to our nationalist aspirations as Filipinos. We are equally grateful for your Christian ministries to our brothers and sisters who migrated to your country. May the Holy Spirit of God anoint you with wisdom and power as you proclaim the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ within the dynamic landscapes of Christian mission in your context. To God be the glory. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much to uh, Bishop Pete M. Terrio uh, from the Philippines for that global greeting. And now is that time when we make our offerings to the Lord, when we give ourselves, our hearts, but also our gifts to God. To do that, the address is on your screen now, and that is give.net slash mchw. It is safe and secure to give to the Lord through that link on your screen now. But please do make it clear in the comment section whether this is your weekly offering or you are giving a designated gift to support our live stream services here. You've been generous and we want to be thankful and grateful for all that you have done to keep this going. May God continue to bless you. And now the Reverend Tony Miles uh, will offer a prayer of dedication for all the gifts given online and in different ways. Let us pray together. Generous God, you are a community of relationship Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and you call us to be caught up in your life. And we pray that we may do that with generosity, that as you call us to serve you and to serve others, we may enable community in the world where all are cared for, all are blessed, and all hear the good news. So receive the gifts that we offer and multiply them, we pray, for the furtherance of your kingdom and to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen.
And now William is going to read for us, William Coughlin, and he's going to read our gospel lesson, sorry, our epistle lesson to the Romans. This morning's reading comes from Romans chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace in which we now stand and we boast in the hope of the glory of God not only so but we also glory into our sufferings because we know our sufferings produces perseverance perseverance character and character hope and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has given to us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be Be to God. God.
Yes, gracious God, into your presence you draw us. And as we are in your presence, our hearts are open to hear your word to us. So we turn again to the Bible for our gospel lesson that's going to be read for us by Mary Grace. This reading is taken from John chapter 16, verses 12 to 15. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me, because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Trinity Sunday has been described as a preacher's nightmare. The reason for that is because it's well nigh impossible to explain how three persons can be one God and how one God can be undivided and yet at the same time be three persons as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Maybe that's why the members of staff have chosen this weekend to go away on a church weekend. But seriously, how do you explain the Trinity? It's an intellectual and mathematical conundrum which seems to defy logical explanation. But I think that in itself reveals a false assumption, which is that everything about God can or should be fully known and explained in rational and mathematical terms. It's suggesting that God can be fully comprehended and pinned down analysed and rationalised, contained and owned by the workings of the human intellect, which is itself a part of God's creation. So to do that is rather like analysing any aspect of God's creation, and so treating God as any other part of God's creation. It's treating God as something that's out there, seeing God in the same way as something that God has created. But that makes no sense at all. How can God as creator be at the same time part of God's creation? But that is not what God is. God is not like an object out there to be examined and studied like some planet or star seen through the lens of a telescope. Nor is God a tiny detail of the creation that can be scrutinised under a microscope. God is and what undergirds the whole of creation so that philosophers and theologians have described God as the ground of our being. How can you analyse and scrutinise that? How can you explain what is in the nature of God essentially at heart a deep mystery? So a different approach is needed. I want to suggest that we use Trinity Sunday to deepen our understanding of God by entering more fully into the experience of God, which is what the Trinity as Father, Son and Holy Spirit is, I think, really all about. So to help us in that task, I want to draw on a centuries-old means of relating to God that has served countless generations of praying Christians seeking after God. It's the use of icons, a means of prayer and reflection used by Orthodox Christians. You may have seen this image before. It's called Rublev's icon and was painted in the 15th century by André Rublev to portray the hospitality of the Trinity. Although it may well depict the three mysterious strangers who visited Abraham as recounted in Genesis chapter 18, it has drawn people over almost 600 years to enter into this mysterious and wonderful presence that is the Trinity. Most people, however, take the figures seated from left to right to be God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. The Son and the Spirit incline their heads towards the Father, and he directs his gaze back to them. 
It has been said that love is initiated by the Father, embodied by the Son, and accomplished through the Spirit. What Rublev portrays is a community of relationship bound together in love rather than depicting a mathematical conundrum. And in addition to the dynamic of the relationship in the Godhead demonstrated by the icon, what is of equal significance is the space in the foreground between the two figures in the space where the cup is placed. This is done deliberately to enable us, as those viewing the icon and praying to the Trinity, to enter into relationship with them, to join in their circle of love at their own invitation. Let's see then how all that plays out with the three members of the Trinity. And let's think first about the Father. Father is a metaphor that is very dependent for its application on our experiences of our own fathers. In the epistle reading from Romans, Paul spoke about reconciliation with the Father. As Paul goes on to reference gaining access to the grace of God, he's probably thinking in terms of the temple. It should be noted, of course, that the temple system was really designed to keep people away from God rather than to encourage them to get too close to God. As God was seen to dwell in the Holy of Holies right at the centre of the temple, the nearer people approached God, the more they were in danger of being consumed by God's holiness. The holiness of God and the sinfulness of humans coming together was rather like the most lethal chemical reaction you could imagine. But now, says Paul, we are justified by faith and we are in a state of grace. That means we can approach God the Father and enter into relationship with him as the one who initiates love for us. And all that is possible because of Jesus. So let's now turn our thoughts to Jesus. Jesus demonstrates the perfect life of obedience to God, which undoes and overturns the disobedience of Adam. The cross is the sign that by his death and resurrection, Jesus has dealt with the sin of human rebellion against God. When I worked here at Central Hall, I had a door pass to gain entry into the building. This pass would take me anywhere I needed to go. But since I left, that pass became redundant. So now I have to wait for the doors to be opened for me by someone else. It's rather like that with Jesus. Through the cross, he has opened the door for us to gain entry to the Father, where we were once unable to gain access ourselves. As the writer to the Hebrews tells us, Jesus has created a new and living way to the Father. Through Jesus' death and resurrection, he gave a door pass or an electronic tap or swipe card to everyone who places their trust in him. Christ's death and resurrection gets us through the door and enables us to go right into the very presence of God where we could not previously enter. This is where God wants us to be, to see and celebrate the hope of the glory of God which we lost through Adam's disobedience. And now there is no fear that we will be consumed by God's holiness because our sin has been taken away. Reconciliation and peace with God become then reality for us. And as Paul tells us in Romans, this is the work of the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. The Holy Spirit has poured into our hearts the love of God, not so that we can understand God better intellectually, but to experience more fully his nature, which is love. As you enter into that dynamic of that relationship, let the experience enable you to grow, not so much in an intellectual or mathematical understanding of God, 
but in an existential and spiritual reality of the presence of God, which has the capacity to transform your life. The knowledge the icon offers you may not unlock the rationale of three persons in one God, but through entering into that circle of love, you will gain knowledge of a different kind. So may what I am about to say be the knowledge that you gain from the Trinity. Firstly, whatever your experience of your father may have been, God the Father loves you with a constant, inexhaustible, unconditional love. Yes, he loves you, however you may love yourself or however you think others may love you. Secondly, Jesus the Son came from the Father to live and die for you and was raised again to offer you new life. By his death and resurrection, know that through Jesus you are reconciled with the Father. You have peace with God and all your sins are forgiven. It is through Jesus that you pass into the presence of God, where previously God's holiness excluded you because of your sins. But no more. The empty cross, along with the empty tomb, is the passkey to eternal life, the life of heaven, the life of being forever in the presence of the living God. And thirdly, the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit sent to us by Jesus from the Father when he ascended into heaven. Know that the Holy Spirit will guide you into all that you need to know because the Holy Spirit speaks what he hears from Jesus and the Father. It's like the voice of God dwelling within us to direct our way in life and to lead us on into the purposes God has for our lives. I may not be able to explain how three persons can still be one or how one God can be undivided as three persons. What I have come to know, however, about the Trinity is, I think, far more special. Quite simply, it is this. The Father loves me deeply. Jesus brings me into God's intimate presence and the Holy Spirit speaks God's purpose and direction for my life. I hope that each of you will come to have that sort of knowledge of the Trinity for yourselves as well. And I say that because God is truly on your side, no matter who you are, no matter how you see yourself or how you think others see you, and no matter what you have done in your life. God wants you to be part of God's life. God wants you to share in that community of relationship that exists between Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And God wants you to be part of that community too. So will you? Will you seek to enter into the dynamic of the Trinity and find growing in you the life of God, the life that comes to transform you through God who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit? I pray that you will. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Amen. Yes, we do worship a holy God, a mysterious God, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier all at once, beyond our human understanding, and yet closer to us than breathing. So let us pray together. Called by the great God that we worship, let us pray fervently for the church and for the world. We bring before you, O God, the needs of your church in its weakness and its potential. Revive and refresh us, teach us and direct us. Inspire all who preach, teach and gossip the good news and uphold all who suffer therefore their faith in any way. May we be caught up in your life. God of mystery and compassion. You know us and love us. We bring before you, O God, the particular problems of our age and our culture. Renew in us a commitment to community and to mutual trust. Give a sense of value to all who despise others and themselves. Protect the vulnerable and sensitize the hearts of all who have become anaesthetized by images of violence and suffering. We pray especially for the Ukraine at this time. We pray for other areas of conflict in the world and think especially for those who are caring for and supporting refugees. We pray for people to find harmony and peace. And on this anniversary of independence for the Philippines, we pray for the Philippines and especially for those areas that have been affected by natural disaster and other challenges. We thank you for the resilience of the people and we pray for the church in its ministry and witness as we pray for our own Filipino community here in London. God of mystery and compassion, you know us and love us. We bring before you, O God, the nurturing of our children and young people in homes and parenting, schools and teaching, in expectations, pressures and dangers, in the hopes and possibilities for good. We pray especially for those children who have been disadvantaged and traumatised by the lockdown and COVID pandemic. Be with them and lead them through, we pray. God of mystery and compassion, you know us and love us. We bring before you, O God, the hungry and malnourished, the greedy and complacent, those who are ill and those who care for them, those who are unhappy and those who comfort them, and all who are undergoing surgery or painful treatment, and all who have no one to turn to. We bring before you, O God, as well, those who are dying, or those who have died in faith. We know one day we will all see you face to face. For those whom death speaks of fear or annihilation, and those who are unprepared to meet you, be with them and in your grace meet them, we pray. God of mystery and compassion, you know us, and love us. And finally, we bring before you, O oh God, our lives and all that we are, including our successes and our failures. We thank you for the gift of life, and we ask that we may get to know you more deeply day after day. And as we see and understand your holiness, we pray that we might become more holy. 
Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, we pray that God will bless us, that we may be able to find unity together. Now, it may be during this service, uh, through Peter's words or through the prayers and hymns, that in some way God has spoken to you. And if you would like us to pray for you, perhaps you've got something on your heart that you want to share with us, then please do email us at healingprayer.team at mchw.org.uk. That's healingprayer.team at mchw.org.uk. We can't reply to all those emails, but we have a team that will pray for you. So please do send us your prayer requests. And so a prayer as we conclude. O Lord, our holy God, three in one, we offer to you our lives. And we pray that in this coming week we may serve you and further community in our society. We pray that we may serve and be peacemakers for your praise and glory. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all and those we love and those we ought to love. Amen.
That was Gerard Brooks, our Director of Music at Methodist Central Hall Westminster. And don't forget, we'll have another live stream service for you next Sunday morning at 9.30am. And now may the Lord richly bless the rest of your day.